Um, I will uh, live in the same city as my sister. I'll be close to my two sisters and my brother. And uh, I will also be teaching at a small college called Cisco College uh, in Cisco, Texas. Cisco is a very small town. But it's famous because uh, Conrad Hilton built his first hotel in, in Cisco, Texas. It's still there. And so the main street of that town is called Conrad Hilton Boulevard. Yes. So um, it's not far from Dallas. So anybody who, oh, and our new home will have a guest room. We specifically made sure to have a guest room because we expect many visitors to come from Japan. and. Uh, and by the way, it's, it's only about an hour's drive from uh, Bible's sister university at uh, Denton, uh, Texas Women's University. So I can easily uh, pick up students for Thanksgiving uh, mm -hmm. break or whatever. Sometimes students don't have a place to go during the Thanksgiving holidays, and they're forced to get off the campus. So I plan to be available to, uh, I hope, to entertain Bible students who are stranded in Texas during the holidays. Uh, and uh, in my new job, uh, I'll be free for three months every year. So during that time, I plan to write books. So. Any other questions? So you will be a full-time teacher for yes. a while. Yes. And after you finally retire, uh -huh. would you have any plan? Well, Would you like to write your own novel, not just a um, you know paper or you know research? I think that's every uh, person's dream. <laughs> I'd love to try to do that, but as you know, I have boxes of research uh, on all kinds, like rattlesnake research and uh, Kentucky folklore research, Indiana folklore research. Japanese folklore research. So I really would like to study, you know, the research and try to share that with uh, other people who study folklore. As I already studied, did some study of Sashiki Warashi, and actually just now I'm beginning. Uh, actually, Izumi Sawa Sensei and I have a joint research project on uh, purification rituals. And in fact, uh, two weeks ago, we interviewed the former chief priest at Okama Jinja. And he was so gracious, he allowed us to uh, interview him. We asked him questions for two hours. He allowed us to tape record it. And then he, um, he actually had his people to conduct a purification ritual with the drums and flutes. And, uh, and he allowed us to videotape that. And we got some wonderful, wonderful video. And then we also had many photographs. So we've been studying many aspects of purification. And uh, it's really interesting, I think. And uh, Izumi Sawa Sensei is a natural born anthropologist. Uh, so it's been a pleasure uh, to, to be studying with her. And she and I hope to continue a long distance uh, scholarly relationship. <laughs> so, yeah. Yes? Um, of course, you're going to miss your students and coworkers and yeah. friends. Um, besides the people, what are you going to miss about <laughs> Japan? And Japan? <laughs> so besides the people, okay, besides besides the people. people, I can tell you that that's easy to answer. I will miss Inarizushi. <laughs> <laughs> I can eat that every day. In fact, I had some today. And uh, yesterday, um, uh, Takahashi Sensei brought me some uh, homemade uh, Inari Sushi. It was so delicious. And I don't think I can get Inari Sushi in Texas. <laughs> and I don't know how to make it myself. But that would be a really big thing. And I'll miss, I'll be in the middle of West Texas, which has no sea which means there is no fresh seafood. Uh, so I'll definitely miss sashimi and <laughs> sushi and uh, fresh sushi and things like that. And fugu, I'll, I'll really miss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so. yeah. And uh, I, uh, uh, 
I know that I'll have a problem in the beginning with bowing. Uh, because when I went back to Texas, my best friend is a lawyer, and she took me through the courthouse, and uh, we happened to run into the judge. And when we ran into the judge and she introduced me, I bowed deeply. <laughs> <laughs> and they were just laughing at me for, for bowing. So uh, that'll be an adjustment I'll need to try to make. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? One more thing. Yes. I think you have been here for about 16 years at the Mets. Almost and 17 years. 17 years. Yeah. I think uh, I understand that you are accustomed to uh, most of the uh, traditional things, right. but still, is there any customs or uh, tradition which you don't feel comfortable you know, to follow? Mm -hmm. Yes, there is. Um, you know, in America, there's a kind of policy that no meeting ever lasts longer than one hour. <laughs> if a meeting goes longer than one hour, then it's simply rescheduled to another time. And also, in America, if a meeting crosses over a meal time, then the people conducting the, the meeting have to provide food. <laughs> uh, so that's, that's one a uh, Japanese custom that I have never gotten used to. Uh, even last night I was at a meeting till 10 o'clock. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. What made you get interested in uh, Zashiki Waras? That's a very interesting question. And it happened because uh, actually two graduate students, uh, one of them was Shinagawa son. And we went to Nagasaki for a vacation, and we were at a onsen, I forgot the name of the onsen, unsen, 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 onsen. And uh, my husband and I were in one room, and the two graduate students were in another room. And then the next day, uh, we were going home by bus, and um, uh, one of the students was talking with my husband, and she said that they they saw some red lights on the ceiling, and they and they felt that something was tugging their uh, futon, and they felt that there was a zashiki warashi in the room. <laughs> and my husband said, "You need to trade places and sit next to my wife and tell her about this." So that was the first time I had ever heard of zashiki warashi. So when I heard that, then. Of course, I wanted to start doing research on it, and so I just uh, I started collecting information. And one of the things I did was I sent out a notice to the Baiko faculty said, "I'm really interested in this. Could you please give me some references?" And many people gave me references and copies of articles, and and then I was able to get the book, The Legend of Tono, and then I got all kinds of books, and then I started noticing. Zashiki Warashi was very uh, popular in culture. There were manga, anime, uh, there were uh, movies, and uh, there was a stage play. I was so lucky to go to Kokura and see a, a, a musical that had Zashiki Warashi flying in the air, and the children thought that they were real, you know, and um, uh, and you gave me a, a, a young people's novel, also about Yuta. Uh, yeah. So uh, I just, because I'm a folklorist, I studied folklore, and I was just really interested in that, and I just started seeing patterns. And, yeah, that's how I became interested. Yeah. I'm really grateful to the help that everyone gave me on that. Yes. One more question is, you mentioned about the uh, occasion where you had a chance to mingle with the uh, three uh, Nobel Prize winner. Right. Uh, Shima Saini, right. Kenza Roy. Yes. Who is the third person? Yoshizu Sensei, who was the third one? I can't remember. Uh, Yamaguchi? Yes. No, only two. Oh, there was only, only two? Only, okay. Oh, okay. okay. Sorry, my okay. memory was wrong with that. Okay. Maybe that's why I can remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was a great experience.
Any other comment? I think, yes. I think uh, I'm sure, I know that you have made a pro very profound research on Japanese folklore. <laughs> what do you think is the most impressive for you? Well, Maybe, maybe. <laughs> at the beginning, you know, when I first met you, you asked me if I knew about Lafcadio Hearn. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, at that point, I had not really heard of him. And I think the reason was because uh, he, he left America. At, uh, he renounced his United States citizenship, maybe. And I think maybe that's why American scholars did not <laughs> study him, maybe. But after you gave me a book, yeah, the first book, <laughs> yeah. and then I read that. And then I, I collected all his books and read all of them. So I, I think uh, the stories that he presented, you know, he's a special case because he wasn't quite a folklorist, but he wasn't quite literary either. Uh, so folklorists uh, would believe in going out and collecting the information as it actually exists in the culture and, and tape recording it or something and then presenting it. And literary people believe in, you know, artistically creating a story from scratch and building a story. But what he did is he collected stories and then he made them literary. You know, he put them together. So for that reason, folklorists didn't like his work because they felt that the authentic folklore had been tainted or changed. Literary people didn't really like his work because uh, it relied too much on folklore. So he didn't really have a place in the Western world. But after being in Japan for a long time, and after reading all his books, and after seeing everything in culture, like uh, Miminashi Hoichi and all that, I realized how important what he did was. He like, had the best of both worlds. You know, it just depends on your perspective, how you look at it. So I'm really glad that you introduced me to the proper perspective. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, when you return to the United States, do you have a plan to uh, tell the Japanese folklore to U.S. students? I don't have a, a plan, but I know that that will happen. Uh, I know that I'll, I'll be doing that, and uh, I, I really, uh, I have a lot of research, but I wanted to handle it carefully uh, and not to seem as if I'm using it or abusing it, you know, I want to be sure that, uh, that I'm doing it right. Uh, so I'm glad that I have a research partner, uh, is Musaf <laughs> Sensei. Uh, so. Yes, and thank you for all the help that you gave me in Sajiki Warashi <laughs> research. Uh, Mr. Tanaka, as you know, has been running the Shimonoseki English Club for more than 20 years. And this club, they're so dedicated, they meet every Saturday. And a regular group of people that meet every Saturday to study English uh, and study many things. and. Uh, his club was very kind in also helping me with Sajiki Warashi research and many other things too. Thank you. Thank you, too. Besides your trick on Shimono san, can you think of other <laughs> funny thing that you couldn't have loved? Oh, my goodness. Uh, well, you know, I, you know, Americans, when they speak to each other, they kind of have a double code. They are very sarcastic with each other. So they learn how to say something to each other. They say one thing, but it means the opposite thing. But we understand that it means the opposite thing. But often, sometimes, when I try to speak directly to someone in that way, I quickly learned I got into big trouble because the person did not understand that it was the opposite. So I learned I could never be sarcastic 
Uh, and, but then when Americans get by themselves, they can be sarcastic with each other and they understand the code. But sometimes I got in trouble uh, that maybe it wasn't such a funny thing, but, but one day with Mrs. Mukoyama and we were talking and I made a sarcastic remark like, Oh, I guess he doesn't love me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but it was taken seriously, you know. So, uh, anyway, I got in trouble with that. So. <laughs> I think maybe you wanted to go to uh, Tono to I did to research the uh, the Siwaras furthermore. Right, but, uh, and uh, as Ms. Olga say, and I did have a plan to go, and, and then, uh, you know, Japan had the terrible tragedy with the earthquake and tsunami, and everything kind of came to a stop then, so we didn't get to, but I really hope that someday I can come back and, and do that. Yeah. You went! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anything else? I'd, I'd like to thank all of you for coming today because I can look out on these on this group and I can see faces that mean so much to me. Everybody out there, uh, you have a place in my heart and you always will. And uh, I really hope that uh, you will come to see me in Japan. <laughs> <laughs>